Good morning everyone! Mid-sized two-row crossovers over the past decade have started to die off, until it's basically just the Edge and Murano left. However, starting in 2019, this segment is experiencing a rebirth. Both Chevy and Honda have new entries due out early next year, which is why Ford took the time to fortify its leadership in the segment with an extensive refresh for 2019. What we have with us today is the brand new sport model, the ST, finished here in a menacing full black. Of course, we want to give a special thanks to our friends at Madison County Ford Lincoln for providing this fully loaded edge. And if you're in the market for any new Ford, be sure to pay their dealership a visit or check out their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with that said, let's go ahead and see if the edge has what it takes to battle the new product onslaught. So getting started here with the exterior, the entire Edge lineup has seen real extensive changes this year. The main thing Ford did was massage the blunt look into a softer and more sophisticated design. But then for the ST, they turned right around and took the elegant out in favor of an aggressive black mesh as opposed to the standard silver finish. The headlights too were upgraded to look sleeker and the upper two trims now have full LEDs instead of the HIDs from last year. And then down below, you'll see that the glow stick lights have been replaced with traditional LED fog lights. Now the side and back have seen far less changes than up front, but there are still some nice refinements. For one, the LED tail lights no longer connect to each other, so instead you have a black piece that goes across the back no matter what trim you choose. And then setting off the rear are standard circular dual exhaust outlets, or for the ST, these large horizontal exhaust outlets that show it means business. Overall, I have to say I'm impressed by the updated design for the entire lineup, but especially for this murdered out ST, which looks exceptionally clean in person. But what makes this particular ST really stand out are the optional 21 inch gloss black wheels. They are definitely worth the $995, especially if you're going to go with the black exterior. Otherwise, the ST comes standard with 20 inch contrast alloys, the titanium with 19 inch nickel painted alloys, and then the SE and SEL both have 18 inch silver painted alloys. Moving on to the mirrors, they are always power, but the base model doesn't have heating, approach lighting, or LED turn signals. Interestingly though, unlike the rivals, Ford includes standard blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert across all the trims. Now those systems are part of Ford's brand new Copilot 360 system, which packages nearly every other safety system into standard equipment. It includes automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane keeping assist, auto high beam headlights, and the blind spot monitoring that I already mentioned. Additionally, there is a Copilot 360 Plus package also offered, and that further adds adaptive cruise control with stop and go, lane centering, and evasive steering assist. This means that the Edge now has more standard safety equipment than the Nissan Murano or the upcoming Chevy Blazer. Finally, we'll wrap up the outside at the fuel tank. Now the size varies slightly depending on whether it's front or all wheel drive, but all models do get good ranges of 515 miles on the top end, or 389 on the low end, which is predictably this ST. But anyways, that's all there is to cover on the aggressive exterior. So now let's go ahead and see what upgrades Ford has made to the inside. So for the Edge, Ford does nicely include standard smart entry and this really nice looking key fob. 
Now here on the ST, we do have special ST badging, as well as the remote start system. Now to get inside the vehicle, there is a sensor behind the door handle, so all you have to do is grab it. All right, so checking out the cabin of the 2019 Edge, as you can probably tell, there's less changes in here than there are to the outside. Now as far as your colors and materials, what you're looking at is cloth on the SE and SEL in ebony or dune, full leather on the titanium in ebony, ceramic, or cognac, and then here on the ST, all you get the option of is just the black with mico inserts. Turning to the door trim, it does have a really upscale look. You've got leather all through here as well as a special portion with a contrast stitching. The top part is padded and the door handle is made of real aluminum. On your top two trims, you will find three person memory seating. And then your windows are one touch automatic for the front two. Of course on the ST, you've got your special Ford Performance branding as well as your metallic pedals. Now coming over here to the seat, this is 10-way power adjusting and it comes on all but the base trim. And then like I've already mentioned, here on the ST we have these special Myco inserts. Um, real nice feel to them and you get your special ST embroidering. So like I already said, the cabin is not hugely different from last year. However, as far as the materials are concerned, it did not need an upgrade. Now pretty much all the areas that you could touch are soft. So you've got some soft touch plastic across all the upper dash. And then right here in the middle on the ST, we have a faux carbon fiber. Down through here, this is also padded. And then in the middle, you've got a piano black trim. Now push button start is standard on every edge, so all you have to do is press it to go. When you power the vehicle on, you will find an 8 inch display on your top two trims, and this is also optional on the SEL. Now over here at the gauges, you've got a pretty unique setup where you actually have two multi-information displays on both sides of an analog speedometer. Now this is your upgraded setup. It does come standard on the titanium and ST. And then like I said, basically you just have the ability to reconfigure both of these displays so you can take your tachometer off and replace it with different things like your driving controls and safety systems. And then on this side, you've got a second pad and it does the same different things. So you have navigation, phone, and voice. So it just allows you to split uh, basically all the functions so you can have two things up at the same time. Now coming back to the steering wheel, you do have a thin rimmed steering wheel. It is leather wrapped on titanium and ST. And of course on ST we have special branding as well as color contrast stitching. Really nice looking with uh, perforation as well. Now as far as your buttons, like I already mentioned, you've got two pads for your two multi-information displays. Here is your buttons for your adaptive cruise control. And then on this side, you've got your, all your audio functions. Back behind the shifter, your top two trims, again, come with rain-sensing wipers. And here on the ST, you do have paddle shifters as well. And then I am also happy to see that you've got a power-adjusting steering wheel. Now moving on to storage, the Edge has seen improvements this year. So starting out with your center console, just lift it right up, and you've got a uh, basically one tier with nice felt lining, and then you can push that out of the way. You've got an extremely deep console, it goes way down, as well as having a little area tucked in underneath of this part. It is illuminated, and you also have a 12 volt outlet as well. 
In addition to that, you've got several little cubbies. So you've got a little area good for a sideways phone, another area good for standing up your phone. And then if you open this up, you got a really surprisingly deep area. Uh, it has been expanded this year since we have an electronic shifter, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but it's extremely deep on the ST here. We also and the titanium. We also have uh, wireless charging as well, and two USB ports. So, like I just said, instead of the physical controller this year, we now have Ford's new rotary controller. It's really easy to get used to. All you have to do, of course, is turn it over to drive, and then you can press S here to go into sport mode and shift with those paddle shifters. Going into reverse, you will find a standard backup camera across all models. However, here on the ST with the optional 401A package, you will find an additional camera system. Now it is not a 360 degree bird's eye camera, but instead a front 180 camera. So shifting into park here so I can show you, you just press this camera button and it launches you into your front view. And if you press it once more, then you also get your corner view as well. So kind of interesting. Uh, I believe it's this way on the Explorer as well, but it's better than um, not having a front camera at all. And then back behind the shifter you will also find an electronic parking brake, as well as your buttons to defeat the auto start stop system, parking sensors, and this button here is for your auto park function, good for both parallel and perpendicular spots. Now moving on up to this panel, it's pretty much dedicated to your climate controls. Um, you, it is dual zone automatic on the titanium and ST and a manual setup for your SE and SEL. But controlling this system is pretty easy. You've got all your functions represented here with uh, physical controls. So you've got your fan speeds, temperatures, as well as other functions lining both sides here. You can also make similar adjustments up here on the screen if you prefer. So you can adjust all the same things. Uh, and you do have physical buttons for your three-stage heated seats and three-stage ventilated seats, though the heated steering wheel is accessible by hitting the menu and hitting that right there. Our big central knob here is for the audio system. So we've got a brand new 12-speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system on STs and titaniums. So let's go ahead and take a listen. Just like all Ford Bang & Olufsen sound systems, I'm really impressed. It sounds great. Um, but anyways, that brings us to our SYNC 3 system, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. So this is the same version of SYNC 3 that you see in pretty much all other Fords. So you've got your basic home screen, and then you've got your shortcut buttons that go across the bottom. So you can just click into any of these sections, like audio, control the Bluetooth audio from here, and switch sources. Then I've already mentioned your climate controls. You also have your phone button. This gives you access to your contacts, which automatically sync over, as well as text messages. On the top two trims, we do also have standard navigation. It's a very responsive map. Um, you don't have to have navigation, though you can use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay if you prefer that setup. But that's pretty much just a quick covering of the main features. However, we do have a really detailed tech help video available if you want to learn more. A link to that is in the video description. Now moving on up, Ford does nicely include this auto dimming mirror with your three Homelink Universal remotes on the SEL trim and up. And then turning over here, you'll notice the really large panoramic moonroof. Now this is optional on your SEL, uh, Titanium, and ST. As you can see, it's really large, including this front panel, which opens up almost all the way. 
so it gives you a lot of open air space and includes your windscreen as well. But overall, I really like the way Ford balances sport and luxury in this cabin. Now I'll go ahead and hand it off to Mason to check out all the rear areas. In the back of the Edge ST, you're going to find a large amount of space. You'll find 40.3 inches of rear legroom and 40.6 inches of rear headroom. That does place it larger than the Nissan Murano and Hyundai Santa Fe. Now the seat itself is made of that Alcantara and leather design. It's very comfortable and soft. And moving over to the door trim, it's also made of nice materials just like the front. So you do have leather where your arm will rest as well as a stitch design above it. Your rear window is power, and down below that you do have some door storage. All edges do have nice amenities in the rear, since they do come standard with these air vents. And on the ST and Titanium, you do have the option for these two-stage heated rear seats. And down below that, you do have a 12 volt power outlet and a looks like a household style outlet as well. And above that, you do have a large storage area here, as well as a nice rear armrest. It's leather wrapped and it does have some cup holders in the end. Now, up top, we do have this beautiful panoramic moonroof that really airs up the cabin. And you do also have an assist grip, coat hook, and LED lighting. Now behind Drew's 5.8 driving position, I do have plenty of space. So I have probably six to eight inches of rear leg room, and my feet do have plenty of room to move up under the seat. Sliding over, even with the seat scooted all the way back, I still have several inches of leg room. So space is not gonna really be an issue in the edge. So overall, I'm a big fan of the Edge's rear seat. It's spacious and comfortable, and packs a lot of the features that the luxury offerings have in the class. Now to fold the seat, you do have this little handle if you want to do it up here, or there are buttons in the trunk, which I'll show you in a bit. Now coming around to the trunk, it is hands-free power on the titanium or optional on the ST. So just wave your foot right under the bumper and it will open right up. So inside the trunk of the Edge ST, you're gonna find another large amount of space. You're gonna find 39 cubic feet with the rear seats in place, expanding to 73 cubic feet with them folded. That does make it larger than the Nissan Murano and Hyundai Santa Fe once again. Now, of course, it is finished nicely back here with a nice carpet floor. And here is the buttons that I was mentioning earlier to power fold the second row. So just push it, and it does fold nice and fast. In addition to that, you do have a 12 volt power outlet, as well as some storage areas. And underneath the cargo floor, you do have a spare tire. Now the passenger seat does have ST branding, as well as the same beautiful design. And on this model, it is 10-way power adjusting, or it would be six-way power adjusting on the lower models, or fully manual. Now in front of the passenger, you do have nice materials with a padded dashboard, as well as some faux carbon fiber trim. 
Now below that you do have a nice glove box. It's good sized and dampened. And above that you do have a sun visor with a mirror and light. You can also detach it and extend it. Well guys, that's all I'm going to cover up here. So now let's go ahead and see the big feature of the Edge ST, which is the powertrain. Now, of course, this is the ST. So we have the performance powertrain. However, most Edges come standard with a 2-liter turbo 4. And that produces 250 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. Now for 2019, this 2-liter turbo does have more power than last year. And that's a good thing because the optional 3.5 liter V6 has been dropped from the lineup entirely. Now for the ST and the ST only, you've got a 2.7 liter turbo V6. And that produces 335 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque. As far as the transmission, all models come with an 8-speed automatic with standard front-wheel drive or optional all-wheel drive, except here on the ST where you've got standard all-wheel drive. And then as far as your fuel economies, they are right in line with what you get from the Murano. So for your 2 liter with front wheel drive, you've got 22 city, 29 highway, 25 combined, dropping to 23 combined when you add all wheel drive. And then here on the ST with its 2.7 liter and standard all wheel drive, we've got 19 city, 26 highway, 21 combined. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed watching this in-depth look at the 2019 Ford Edge ST. Stay watching for a quick look at the pricing, and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons below. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.